this is Cindy from Bosey Creative Living. It dawned on me how fast Christmas is coming and I have a project in mind I want to do. Um, I won't mention names for who they're for, but if they see this they'll probably guess. Bob had collected old saws and I'm going to paint some little quotes or sayings on them and give them to some young men for Christmas presents. So let me show you what my husband had collected. It'll be a good memorial type of thing for him. They'll, it'll give them something to remember him by. He had quite a collection of some old saws. And since he was a carpenter, this is something to remember him by. That one is really a cool one with the carvings. And I'm going to clean them up because I need to get any grease and grime off of them. The rust is okay for the most part. I am thinking of painting one a solid black. On that solid black one, I'll do some white lettering similar to a chalk art looking type of thing. I have it in my head. I don't have a real solid plan, but that's the way I usually work. Since I'm creative, it tends to... That's how I work. <laughs> That's how you get creative results. And sometimes it doesn't all go well, but usually it does. And since Lily doesn't use the potty pads I bought a whole box of, they're making really good pads for my countertop to work on crafts and stuff here. So I don't mess up my brand new countertop. Lily, are you being ferocious? You like that toy? Yeah. There's a treat in there. Kind of will protect my hands, even though the dish soap's not harsh, but the yeah, that's the real <laughs> goody the glove. The dish soap's not harsh, but the steel wool could be on my nails. Um, I'm usually not this prissy about it. careful on the teeth of the saw for kind of feel when you've gotten a lot of the surface rust off, you can feel it's a lot smoother when you scrub it. And this is the one, this one does not have carving on the handle, but it has a cool, is that a focus? There, is that a cool brass insert? This one has the best carving and some brass inserts again. And this one, uh, that one says Chicago, which is cool because he belonged to the Chicago Carpenters Union. We'll just let those dry good, make sure the wood's nice and dry before I try to sand that, just to bring out a little more detail. I'll be back with the next step. It's dry enough to sand down the handles a bit. Just buffed up the brass a little bit. I like that. Toothbrush, it's dry. It's just an old toothbrush. It helps get it out of the crevices. Residue. Then we want to let me put that clear coat on. We don't want it dust free. I like how the little, I like how the little buttons polished up. 
this is the one I'll paint, but I'm going to protect that brass. Once it has a clear coat on, I think I'll be able to find something goopy like Vaseline or something to coat it with before I paint so it can wipe off of there easy. That one's really pretty too. So I love all this texture on the blade, but yet it's smooth enough to paint. I am using water-based varnish sealer on this. This is the one I'm going to paint, a solid black. I'll probably put a couple of coats because it's really sucking this up. This has been sitting outside for quite a while. going to put it on the blade also. Here we are with two coats of varnish. And that's the water-based varnish. This one here is the one I will paint. So it does look cool that way, but get a neat and quick black paint. So the varnish is still wet there. Alright, I've got about two coats of the clear varnish with water-based varnish sealer. And I want to protect the little brass details on here. Now you can do that with Vaseline, but I have only Vix, but that'll work because it's the same base. So I'm going to smear it on with a Q-tip, and that should resist the paint. And I'm thinking I'll put, I'm actually thinking of a quick coat of spray paint, Rust-Oleum Flat Black. I should never have thought you'd use Vix in an art project. <laughs> Look what I did. Spraying the spray paint, but the nail polish will be fine. This can kind of is leaking. And guess what I'm using to take that off? My lemon <coughs> essential oil. Yep, it works. Still a little bit there, but for just a quick wipe, it's essential oil. Lemon essential oil, it does wonders. And it doesn't hurt the nail polish, but it takes take the spray paint off for the most part. A little scrub brush and I'll be fine. I really, I kind of like this effect of all black. that off. I'll take a couple q-tips get more detail out of that. I think it's gonna work. I like how this antiquing liquid works. It's just very thin. It's gonna work it into that. It is 
is water based, so quick wipe. Nice. I like how that works. I even like how it accents that little bit of cracks in the wood. I'm gonna go with that a little more there. And there's what this is called. It's called a leaking glaze, but it would work for anything that has little fine areas around the out. I use Corel Draw for my designing. I use that in the sign business. I worked in the sign business for many years. Um, so this was similar, familiar with me. I'm in familiar territory. <laughs> I make my workspace actual size and I print out my design in tiles. So it prints on several pieces of paper at the actual size I need. And then I just cut those to fit on the saw. And you can always Cut them apart. You could use separate pieces of paper if you want to just design words, if you don't have the, a graphic program to work with. And you can just tape the word, each word on there, just kind of size it the way you need it. Um, you can always make copies on a copy machine and shrink them down or enlarge them to get your sizes to fit. So there's probably a way you can find to do it. There's probably apps out there. I'm not familiar with all of them. and that would help you design it too. I get on Pinterest for ideas and I, when I open my graphics program I realize I don't have a lot of the fonts I need for this style of work and so I spent most of the day yesterday playing around on my computer finding some free fonts and things like that. So I kind of have fun with that. It was a good day. <laughs> I didn't accomplish much but I enjoyed it. Oh, you're the sweetest boy. <laughs> There are two ways you can go about transferring lettering to the saws. You could do tracing paper, which I started out doing, and then I decided to get familiar with my graphics program again because I just I have my computer set up. My computer, I have good old-fashioned carbon paper, which it's hard to find at the stores anymore. Carbon paper. Carbon paper with a goodwill tag on it, of course. <laughs> I'll tell you, <laughs> you can get good deals there and find things that are hard to find in the stores. So, you could do carbon paper under, the, do your design on the tissue paper, put carbon paper underneath it, um, or I've even put graphite pencil, you know, scribbled on the back of paper and then trace over the front. But that wouldn't show very well on here anyway, so the carbon paper might not be easy to see. Well, it'll be well enough. Here we go. I use painter's tape at the top where it actually is taped to the saw so I don't rip off any clear coat or paint. And the rest I just scotch tape together. And that, I like those sayings. The one on this rusty background, I think the carbon paper is going to be dark enough to show up in, the, in good lighting. And on this one, I'm going to color the back side. I have either a white charcoal pencil or a white um, chalk pastel pencil. So I'm going to try one on each of the letters. I'm just going to color on the back side. So you can probably see where I colored. I tried the, the E is the charcoal, white charcoal, and the B is the pastel. So we'll see what'll work. 
and what I do for this step. I'm just going to outline the letters with a pretty firm, pretty firm writing. And you don't have to be perfect with it because you're going to be painting. And you can always correct with your paint. Let's see. Voila. Either one is going to work just fine. Okay. Well, that won't be too difficult. Maybe I will do that on the other one too. It's so easy to see. All right, continue on. Did y'all know I was left-handed? <laughs> I'm kind of working at a bad angle here too, but it's gonna work. You need pretty firm pressure. Your hand can get a little tired. Oops, I can get a saw there. A little close to the edge there, but I'll make some adjustments. Yes. Okay, I need a little work on that D. Looks like I missed it. That's why you put the tape on there. So you can get it right back where it was. on that one than coloring the whole thing. You can just lay the sheet under it, trace, move the sheet around. And one sheet really lasts quite a long time. You can get a lot out of them. And I'm stocked up for quite a few years worth, <laughs> but it's a handy material to have on hand. Okay, next step is paint. Okay, I'm ready to start painting. So I've got just some cheapy craft paint. Um, I didn't want glossy. I have glossy as a choice, but I don't want the letters to be shiny. And I have a long tapered brush that's similar to a lettering quill as close as I have for painting letters. I did thin this down with some water. Hopefully it's not too much. It's kind of hard to see. I think I'll trace over. I find I have to get at the right angle. <laughs>
keep on going here. I, I, we don't have to watch all this. It'll get boring. You can keep your hand out of the paint. Just use your other hand for support. And sometimes you might get little bubbles in your paint, and if you just wait a little bit, keep an eye on them. If they'll start to look a little clearer on the top, and you can blow on them. And sometimes that gets rid of them without disturbing anything. Like those, they just disappeared. Is in there. Like it. Having your paint the right consistency is very important for filling in areas like this. You want it to flow into a flat. Once you've given your paint some boundaries, it pretty much will stay in that area. Turned out pretty good. <laughs> it just turned out pretty good. And there's saw blade number two painted. Build a life full of love.
thank you for joining me again on another project. This is Cindy from BOCI Creative Living. Please like and subscribe. Keep on watching for more projects. Peace.